What's up, everybody? The Washington Wizards are going to have to make a tough choice. Tyus Jones or Jordan Poole to be the point guard of the rebuild or of the future. So what's your choice? What's my choice? We're going to talk about it next on Locked on Wizards. You are Locked on Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Scott, again. And I appreciate you guys making Locked On Wizards your first listen every single day. We are free and available whenever you get your podcast. And on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. And today, um, we're going to talk about Tyus Jones versus Jordan Poole. A report came out that Tyus Jones does want to stay with the Washington Wizards and is comfortable in the district. But how does that conflict with the future of the point guard position? We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to grade the coaches, both Coach Weston Sale Jr. and Interim head coach Brian Keith. So definitely rock with your boy today. So let's get into it. Um, a report came out, and um, this is the day right after the exit interviews. Um, that Tyus Jones said that he's comfortable in, in DC, his family's comfortable in DC, he likes it here, and he does not mind being part of a rebuild and being an influence in the rebuild. So let's kind of get into this. Um, a lot to unfold as far as such matter. Now, I'll say this obviously, as you guys know, uh, I was there for the exit interviews. I talked, you know, and um, as part of the media. That talk to Tyus, and you can kind of get the drift from him. That look, his family does like DC. You know, he's comfortable here. Uh, he he doesn't really mind being part of a rebuild. But we're going to talk about my choice, your choice. What is the best choice for the Washington Wizards going forward? So let's get into it. Tyus Jones, unrestricted free agent. I guess uh, I don't know if it's official or the way to the end of the NBA season, but he is now a free agent. So right now we don't owe him any money. He can go wherever he wants. It's been said that he wants starter money. Now we. The Washington Wizards gave him his first opportunity to be a starter. Uh, up to that point, he was a six-man backup point guard. Um, he did play when John Moran was out, so he did play starting minutes at one point and did really, really well. And if you look at his turnover to uh, assist ratio, elite numbers, elite numbers as far as assist to turnover ratio. So, you know, <laughs> should he stay? You know, is there a scenario where he could stay and be the point guard for the Wizards? And it's just like I said, I like Tyus. And and let me and you know, looking at his comments and looking at comments from Kyle Kuzma, I'll say this first and foremost: it's very refreshing to have guys who want to be here. We haven't had it. We've always had an issue in DC with attractive free agents. So he's been an issue with us. And you know, it's refreshing to have guys who want to be here. So I'll say that. So you know that when he said that. A part of me was kind of like, okay, gotcha. You do like it here. You know, Kyle Kuzma, you know, just opened up his first restaurant in the Virginia area in uh, Gainesville, Virginia. So, you know, he's, he, you know, he's another guy who's kind of setting the roots in the, in the DC area. But, you know, Tyus Jones, obviously, you know, I said it before, you know, you know, when we got reports that the organization was kind of in internal discussions, whether they can bring him back on a team friendly deal. I said at the time, you know, I, I didn't mind because it's a rebuild. He's a point guard who, look, he's a floor general. He's a guy who's going to, set other people up you know he's, he's a guy who's going to be a good influence in the locker room he's a guy who's been around the block a few times in the nba so he will definitely from a leadership standpoint from a standpoint of being a point guard who can get other people involved wouldn't be a bad decision as far as bringing him back in a rebuilding team but but and jordan Poole is the the, the the biggest piece of this right you know looking at jordan Poole, you know all right at first you know myself included a lot of people were very very happy to see us make that trade bringing jordan Poole over here including Ryan Rollins and Patrick Baldwin Jr., because a lot of us saw the product in Golden State, you know, him being a six-man, him stepping in for uh, Stephen Curry, playing, you know, he was a big reason why they won a championship. And so that's one thing you can't take away from Jordan Poole. Um, he had his struggles. Uh, he had his acclimation period where he's kind of acclimating, coming over from a contender to a rebuilding team where, you know, he's a six-man. He was a young asset over in Golden State. So now he's the man. He's a co-captain. You know, he's definitely a guy who – you know, he inherited a lot more responsibility. And for a young guy, it took him a while to kind of figure that out. You know, he had his struggles on the court, you know, the check the moment um moments, you know, um, people, you know, people saying you know, just stuff off whatever, but he dealt with his issues, you know. Even when and so they you know, interim head coach Brian Keith made that decision, you know, put him in the six man, put him on the bench, and he flourished. And then with Ty is going down, not, you know, he started getting starting minutes, you know, and he and he played at a high level. So you definitely saw a young man at the age 24, man, that he took his L's, 
took his trials and tribulations and he kept working. He kept working. You could put his head down and he kept working. So, but another component to look at it outside of that is that the tempo. How do you get the most out of this roster, this young roster, especially when you look at Corey Kisper shoot on the outside? Denny Avia, with his, you know, with his three point shot now being a threat. When you look at other players like Patrick Baldwin Jr., when you know, how do you utilize outside shooters and really how do you get the most out of his offense? Pushing the tempo. So that's another component to look at when looking at Tyus Jones versus Jordan Poole. You know, look at the Tyus, it's like, you know, I get it. You know, you want to be here, and you know, it's good to have a guy that wants to be here. You know, looking at his comments, looking at Kyle Kuzma, him, you know, both of them wanting to be here, both of them being vets who want to be part of the rebuild. And Tyus Jones, again, I think he would definitely would be a point guard who, you know, as a floor general, he can get other people involved absolutely because he again if you look at his turnover to assist ratio elite numbers very elite numbers but the one fact that i look at when i'm looking at both of these guys right and a couple things two things i'm looking at number one Corey kisper comes in and in, in, kind of in the mix a little bit because next year he's in the contract year so if you know i definitely think that they, they need to extend him just like they extended denny i think he's definitely part of the young foundation and you got to keep Corey Kispert in D.C., in my opinion, because everybody needs that three-level score, that shooter. Um, definitely needs to work on um, defense, but he took huge strides this year on the defensive side. Now, is he a finished product? No. Is he going to be a lockdown defender? No. But you saw a lot, a lot of effort on the defensive end. So I think you need to look at, you know, as far as money. And obviously, we're not tied up like we were a year, two years ago, you know, looking at the Supermax contract with Bradley Bill. You know, right, right now, the biggest contracts on, on the um, – on the payroll is Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma, and even Kyle Kuzma and even Denny Avia's contract. You know, Denny's and Kyle Kuzma's contracts are team friendly, so you're not breaking the bank. And with you know Jordan Poole obviously being the guy with the with the biggest contract, that's another factor to look at. He's the guy, you know. So the biggest factor with my decision as far as who I would choose between Tyus Jones and Jordan Poole is because I like both of them. I think both of them could be really good for a rebuild. But again. How can you get the most out of his offense? How can you get the most out of his team? Simple. Push the tempo. Push the tempo. I believe this was the number one team in tempo. And when you saw Jordan Poole at point guard, you saw a team that pushed the pace, caught defenses on off guard. You know, he would, and, and again, you know, just like well, I, I told him at the exit interviews, that if you look at Jordan Poole and his ability to attack the rim and collapse defenses, take the attention from the defense, you know, and really utilize the talent outside, whether it's Corey Kisper, whether it's Denny Avia, whether it's is PBJ, you know, the list goes on to guys that, you know, a lot of guys have eaten on the perimeter. And I think that, you know, we, we've been spoiled in DC. You know, we had John Wall for a long time, which look, look at John Wall. He made his money off transition, pushing the pace, catching defenses off guard, utilizing shooters. Without John Wall, Otto Porter doesn't sign a, a contract, in my opinion. Without John Wall, you don't get that development of Bradley Bill, in my opinion, because he was a guy who, again, attacked the rim utilize shooters push the pace you know his passing his vision set guys up so you know a lot of guys owe their contract their success to john wall just based on that fact and then you know looking at john wall and jordan Poole, i see a lot of that a lot of that attack in the rim when I, that i saw with john wall with jordan Poole. now the only factor between those two guys is shot right now jordan Poole's got a better shot and like i said john wall's my favorite wizard of all time but the one thing about john wall was his jump shot you know, he did not have a consistent jump shot. Now, it was a consistent enough to hit it against the Celtics, and I'm definitely happy about that. But, you know, he didn't have a consistent jump shot. And a lot of people wonder, you know, what could his ceiling have been if he had a consistent jump shot? You know, you got a guy who is very similar um, to John Wall's play style, a guy who can push the pace, who can attack, attack, who's got vision. But people sleep on Jordan Poole and his passing ability. So, I, you know, in the fact that he can spread the floor, he can shoot the three-point shot, I think that's the that's the the direction we need to go. Nothing against Ties because I, I do feel like the Ties came in, played at a high level. He played well. Now defense, you know, and you can say really about both of them, right? You know, defense was something that was just not their forte. Um, they, they were the worst defending backcourt. You know, with, with Tyus Jones and Jordan Poole in the same backcourt, they were not a very good defensive backcourt, a very small backcourt. So they had their limitations, and you can pretty much agree that they were not a good backcourt. So at this point, they can't go exist. So you're gonna have, they're gonna have to choose, in my opinion, because yeah, you could bring them back, and maybe this is a scenario where Jordan Poole's cool with a six man role, because that's the only way that works if you bring back Tyus and you still have Jordan Poole, and you, then you got to ask yourself the question: Do I really want to pay that amount of money for a guy to be six man when clearly he can start? 
So that's, in, you know, those are a couple of dynamics to really look at is that, you know, Ty Jones, again, I love the fact that he wants to be here. I love it. You know, you definitely want people to want to be here, want to be part of the process, want to be part of re the rebuild, especially vets. When you're a vet, because most vets, man, um, you know, Kyle Kuzma, he got his ring, so I can see why he wants to be part of a rebuild and have that leadership role in D.C. But in Tyus, man, you know, you would figure he wouldn't go chase a ring. And with him being a vet, being a guy who hasn't won a ring yet, um, being cool with being on the rebuild, it shows that, number one, he's a family guy because, you know, his family being comfortable here is a big factor. And two, you know, he's ready to take that leadership role. But, here's you know, so it's, it's a hard decision, and I, and I don't <laughs> – you know, I really don't envy Will Dawkins and Michael Winger making a decision because, like I said, Ty Jones came in and he played good ball. You know, he did his job. Uh, but, but to me, to get the most out of this roster, you got to push the pace. And I think that with Jordan Poole's attack style, with his with the way that he, he he can push the tempo, I think it's just time that he needs to be the guy at point guard going forward, in my opinion. I think he needs to be the point guard going forward and really model the offense after him. Now, and there's other factors that I look at before we move on, you know, whoever's that point guard doesn't have to show the load along, uh, alone, right? I mean, Denny Avia shows that he has that playmaking ability to be a secondary ball handler or at times overlap, you know, maybe he's the, you know, maybe he's point forward for the second unit if it overlaps, but you have capabilities, you have help. You know, you have a secondary ball handler in Denny. You know, Jared Butler provided great minutes. So, you know, and you just got a new contract. So I, I definitely see Jared Butler being that backup point guard in the future so jordan Poole to me is my choice y'all um i definitely think that we need to roll with him being the point guard of the future and definitely wish tyus jones all the blessings in the world because like i said he came here did his job and i definitely think that you know with this team coming together a lot of that has to do with tyus man you know he was definitely a leader but i'm looking at the play style what is the best play style to get the most out of this team and really utilize the young talent we have because this this roster is built to move it's built to roll man so i'm rolling jordan Poole. like i said it's a hard decision because i do like tyus and i think that yes he could come in and be a great point guard for a rebuilding team but you know at this point with money wise save the money for Corey kispert and like i said it's a tough decision i like tyus man and but to me jordan Poole needs to be that guy going forward and be the point guard of the future in my opinion because we need a faster play style as far as the offense so that's my decision if, if i was will dawkins i would roll with jordan Poole being the starting point guard next year and definitely go off of that because I mean, depending on how we do in the draft, depending on how the dominoes fall, because obviously Lazer Sham is probably not gonna be here. And Tyus again is unstricted free agent. So hopefully he gets that starting position. I really do think that he can be a starting caliber point guard, but everything's about system fit and the right location. So again, I definitely hope he finds that. But you know, if there's a choice between the two, I'm a rolling with Jordan Poole, in my opinion. But We'll see. We'll see what the future holds because right now there's a lot of hard decisions that need to be made by the organization. So uh, definitely comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Who are you rolling with? Bring, are we bringing ties back? Are we rolling with JP13? What are we doing, y'all? So definitely going to talk about that. But um, we're going to get into coach grades. We're going to coach Wes Sill Jr., Lord Hammers. And then we're going to get into interim head coach Brian Keith. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by Nissan. So are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever want to Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. So there are three great products. The 2024 Nissan Rogue, the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, and the 2024 Nissan Armada. But I'm going to roll with one. Uh, today, we're going to roll with the 2024 Nissan Rogue, right? Because what is it about it do I like? Well, first, it's perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant call on for almost anything. I'm trying to tell y'all. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. You see what I did there. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. So take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Tonight's episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Guys, I need, I need you guys all to listen up for this huge announcement. I've been tracking the leaderboards every day, keeping my eye on the scores, putting all my heart into it, and I'm super pumped to announce I'm finally on top. That's right. Obviously, I'm talking about the hit mobile game Monopoly Go. you probably heard of it, right? It's been downloaded over 150 million times. Lord, it's a great mobile twist on classic Monopoly. You can play anywhere, anytime. You explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Las Vegas to Camelot to the moon, baby, all while raking in a huge fortune. Charge rent, 
on iconic properties, just like classic monopoly. You can change your friend's rent on your iconic properties Ooh. or go after the monopoly money by pulling back bank heists and taking wrecking balls to their landmarks. Wow. But my favorite part is the leaderboards where you can see who's a monopoly tycoon and who's gone bankrupt. So go get yourself on the charts, download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store and Google Play. It's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live on April 17th at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with, lo with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fancy football angle. The Locked On NFL mock draft on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Stream live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. So, um, again, uh, definitely comment below. Let me know what you guys think about Tyus Jones versus Jordan Poole. Like I said, I've enjoyed Tyus Jones here, and it's a tough decision because, again, you do like guys who want to be here. But, look, it's about the future. It's, you know, we're going into year two of a rebuild, so hard decisions are ahead. So, again, comment below. But also, like, subscribe. So let's get into the next subject. We're going to grade the, the coaches today, and I'm I, pretty much it's going to be pretty clear cut. If you guys know what I'm talking about. So we're going to start with Wes Unsell Jr. Uh, started the season as the head coach of the Washington Wizards. Uh, the son of Wizards, or really bullish icon, Wes Unsell. Um, player, coach, GM at one point. Part of the only championship team in franchise history. So definitely Wizards or slash bullish royalty. Just from the name, right? Uh, so coming in, you know, obviously at, at the time he was hired, you know, we had Bradley Bill on the, on the roster. And his number one choice is Sam Cassell. But they rolled with West Sale Jr., obviously, because the name linked to the franchise. So I get that. But, you know, <laughs> what do I grade him? I, I, I guess my grade for him this year is going to be the grade for him the whole tenure here. Um, let me start by saying that, you know, obviously, I, I've, I've actually talked to West Sale Jr. numerous times. And I'll say he's a really good guy. But it's a National Basketball Association. And this is a performance-driven league, right? I mean, nice guys don't always don't always win, man. It's, a, it's about performance is about results right and looking at his tenure is just it was a big flop it really was because you there's a lot of issues and you can get into each issue but it all boils down to this you as, as a head coach you have to take control of the locker room right you have to be that guy who feels the pulse of the team you know a standard it's all about a standard you know you set the standard for your team now obviously you know you have you know, certain goals that are put down by the front office and ownership. I get all that. But the coach, the locker room's yours. You set the standard. At West Elso Jr. never set a standard. You know, it was just the, it, at times it seemed like the players were running the locker room. And you saw issues with, you know, the, the year 2021, the 2022 season, you know, the fights between Trez Harrell and AKCP, you know, Denny getting at it with uh, Davis Bertans, which really makes you think if we saw that fight from Davis Bertans while on the court, he probably still be here, right? But that's all another subject matter. But you saw issues. You know, there's a lot of issues. You know, and, and I'm not gonna say it's all on West Hill Jr. because it's not. I think a lot of had to do with at the time um, the GM was Tommy Shepard, previously Ernie Grunfield, but roster construction was an issue. I say that's one thing that you can't put on West is that roster construction. You know, we had a team where you have a mix of veterans who um, either just got paid, you know, Bradley built the time, or trying to get paid. You know, Kate, you know, if you look at him, Porzingis, you know, at the, you know, Kyle Kuzma, you look at it. So you had a mixture of veterans who are trying to get paid. And then you have a mixture of young guys who are trying to develop and trying to find what their place is going long term in the organization. And it's tough to try to compete for a playing spot or the AC and develop at the same time. And that's kind of the quandary that Weston Sill Jr. found himself in, which was. You know, you're trying to find minutes for guys to get paid, you know, definitely get five minutes for the veterans and try to still be that team to compete for a play in and, and try to get into the playoffs. But you're still trying to develop, too. And that's just a hard thing to do. And I felt like, yeah, the, the, the deck was definitely stacked against Wessels Jr. from the get. And like I said, you know, he just he had a difficult job from the get from from day one. He had a difficult job because he's trying to balance what, you know, minutes wise. Because, you know, Tommy Shepard didn't really know what he wanted to do, whether he wanted to go for the plan and develop the talent. And 
obviously we, before we've talked about the draft with Denny versus Tyrese Halliburton, how Tommy kind of drafted for immediate impact as opposed to talent that needs to be developed. And looking at Denny, you know, we're, we're starting to see him, you know, the fruitation, the hard work, I mean, the pay dirt of, you know, his development, but he needed to be developed as opposed to Tyrese Halliburton who came right in and, and even then, you know, his first year or so, you know, he wasn't where he is now. But there's a whole other subject about that. But, you know, Weston Sell Jr., he had the deck stacked against him from day one. And I, I do believe that the roster was just – it wasn't – a it was a roster and, and it was in flux. You know, and, and really – the roster really kind of emulated the organization at the time, which was it was a franchise that really had no direction. They didn't know whether every year was the A seed and the plan was the goal. Or they wanted to develop young talent, and I think now with a new front office, new you know we get new coach, um, new mentality from ownership. I think that they're definitely hitting in the right direction. But you know, ultimately, he was also his own demise, also right as far as coaching, Lord Hammers. Um, but you know, his his ability, you know, he didn't make the right adjustments. You know, his lack of adjustment, especially after the half, killed his team. Killed his team. You know, lineups are always an issue. You know, he had his favorites. You know, nothing against Anthony Gill. You know, I I'm a big Anthony Gill fan, but. At the time, you know, he was getting minutes over Denny at one point. You know, he was getting minutes over guys who clearly needed that development. So his lineups were terrible. His lack of adjustments were just, were, were very difficult to watch. And he he had a shortcomings as a coach. You know, the, to me, yeah, looking at the on-court product, you know, his adjustments, you know, kind of repeating what I just said, his lack of adjustments and his lineups really put us in a bad spot at times. But it, it, it ultimately comes down to one thing, y'all. He did not have control of his locker room. and it shows because his team responded automatically as soon as interim head coach Brian Key took over. You know, you saw a really new effort on the defensive side. Rebounding got better. Chemistry got better. Communication on both sides of the ball got better. You know, they, they came together as a team. So, like I said, Weston Sell Jr., really, really, really nice dude, man. Definitely was a pleasure. But ultimately, he just didn't have what it took to be successful in D.C. So, you know, definitely blessings for his next spot. I know he got promoted to the front office, but, you know, whatever he does next, definitely, definitely want to see – him succeed but i think the next head coach for the washington wizards is definitely in the building already so and we're definitely gonna talk about it in, talk about that in the future but i think we already have our head coach but if i'm gonna grade him real quick before we move on i'm gonna grade him an f i'm sorry i, I mean no 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 i'm gonna grade him a, a d minus and the reason for that is roster construction you know, it's tough being a coach of a team where you have veterans who you're trying to find minutes for, who are trying to get paid, who are trying to showcase themselves to get paid and still find minutes for guys who could be important pieces down the road, looking at Denny, looking at Corey Kispert, and having to find minutes for them to develop. Hard place to be in as a coach, but ultimately his lack of adjustments, you know, the lack of control over the locker room and, you know, the lineups. I got to give him a D minus, man. So that's what I'm rolling with. So we're going to grade interim head coach Brian Keith next. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. So let's get into the final portion of, of today's video. Grading interim head coach, in my opinion, soon to be a head coach, Brian Keith. Now, Brian Keith came in with uh, West uh, West Cell Jr. being promoted um, and took over a team in, in, a, in seriously in flux. You know, we had a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, Jordan Poole with his struggles, you know, you're looking at a guy who struggled on the court and struggled as far as mentality, you know, and, you know, he went through a lot. I mean, y'all forget what he went through, man. But you know, a lot was going on in the roster, and he and look automatically, you saw a different team. If you can really pencil the two biggest issues with the Washington Wizards this previous season, or this, the season still on, Lord Hammers, but this season is rebounding and defense. And you can argue the defense has been an issue the whole time under West Hill Jr. But rebounding and defense were issues. You saw improvement in those areas. Now, did he almost automatically? You know, you saw them playing harder. So there's, there's really, and 
is a third component to that, which is culture. And I get it. Y'all are sick and tired of hearing me talk about culture. And I kind of talked about it last night, why um, we're not used to culture in D.C., because we've never been through a proper rebuild. We've been through rebuilds, not a proper rebuild. We've been through seasons where Ernie Grunfeld or Tommy Shepard, you know, we're not so much Tommy outside of Johnny Davis, but Ernie Grunfeld continued to miss in the draft. You know, whether it was Jan Vesley, whether it was Chris Middleton, whether it was never finding a backup point guard, whether it was, you know, using your second pick on a guy in Siberia, you're never going to dag on C. I mean, you, you continue to hit or it's continued to miss in the draft. So we never we're not used to rebuilds as far as a proper rebuild because we never been through a proper rebuild. So and that's the biggest thing. But getting back to Brian Keefe. He got results automatically. Rebounding got better. You know, rebounding numbers, especially Marvin Bagley III, you know, that goes back to Will Dawkins, you know, and we graded the front office last night, and he got high marks. You know, Marvin Bagley III, that trade was money, and it helped with the rebounding issues because he came right in, rebounding numbers got better. Tristan Vucevic coming over here and finally playing. And again, it goes to Will Dawkins with him being drafted in the second round, finally hitting on a second-round pick, which we haven't hit on second-round picks since I can't remember how long. It's been a while. So those are two factors. You know, rebounding got better. Defense got better. And, you know, what what components of defense got better? Well, easy. You know, transition defense got better. Perimeter and um, paint defense, we had struggles due to injuries, right? You know, Martin Bagley third and had injury issues. Rashawn Holmes had injury issues. So it had more to do to lack of personnel in the paint as opposed to just not being good. Obviously, you know, Daniel Gaffer going to Dallas, you know, definitely congrats on my man Gaff, man, playing well in Dallas. But, um, Finding the guys to get better rebound. You know, Rashawn Holmes and Martin Bagley III did well, in my opinion. And I, I really did not know what to expect from Rashawn Holmes coming over from Dallas, but both of them have been solid. So rebounding and, and defense got better. But culture, this team fought to win games at the end. You know, the second half of the season, you saw them play good teams, play them hard and play to win. That's culture. You know, and, 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 they, and like I said, that goes back to why I'm such a big stickler on culture with the Washington Wizards because – we have the opportunity now to properly rebuild this team, not Ernie Grunfeld rebuild it, like actually rebuild the team, solidifying and or establishing and solidifying culture, you know, creating an environment where we're playing hard, playing to win. You know, that that's what you want to set up in year one, you know, and as a you know, also you want to evaluate talent, what you're doing. You know, I think at this point, we all know who the young pieces are going forward. You know, right now, Johnny Davis, who knows? But you know, Corey Kisberg, chances are they're probably going to extend the next year. You know, Denny Avia got an extension. The list goes on. So, you know, Brian Keith, he definitely, and if you, you know, going off the vibe and going off the comments from a lot of pretty much every player that was interviewed yesterday at the exit interviews, this team likes Brian Keith. This team rallied behind Brian Keith. And, and a few reasons I got was number one, cares about the players. He generally cares about his players on his team. You know, he's trying to put each player in a position where they can be successful because when individually they're successful come together is the team successful you know the mentality you know holding them to a standard which is desperately needed here in dc he held these guys to a standard and that was something that was echoed by most of the vets on his team he held them to a standard you know he, he leadership wise he put people he put leaders in position to be leaders you know what i mean kyle kuzma has been that leader for this team since he's been here you know tyus jones has been a leader Anthony Gill, who does not get a lot of respect as far as leadership. If you look at a guy who's the first guy on the court high-fiving people, the guy who's sitting on the knee, doesn't even sit on the bench. He's he's on the knee at the, uh, at the other baseline. Anthony Gill is probably one of the most important vets as far as leadership on his team, in my opinion. And that's why I'm thinking, that, look, if they want to retain Anthony Gill, I'm all for that because he's been very, very important. So those three guys have been big for leadership. And, you know, obviously, Denny Avia. People forget that he has definitely stepped up as far as leadership. You saw pieces of leadership from Jordan Poole at the second half of the season with him talking to young guys. You know, so you definitely have a roster who, you know, again, I'm echoing yesterday the exit interviews, a roster that they like each other. They like playing with each other. You know, it's a, it's no, there's no turmoil. You know, a lot of stuff, you know, the media try to conjure a bunch of stuff up, you know, going after Jordan Poole all year long, you know, trying to pick this and that and trying to create an atmosphere where people are thinking that there's issues. But, you know, and maybe they're really putting on one heck of a front. But I'm saying, right, that, that the the whole aura that I got from these guys is that they enjoy playing with each other. And it, there's an atmosphere where people are trying to learn, people are trying to get better. And I think a lot, if not most of that, has to do with Brian Keith. It does. He, 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 in my opinion, 
he needs to be considered to be the next head coach for the Washington Wizards because I think that he's already shown that he can do it. He's already shown that, you know, he can deal with – because that's another thing that was brought up is that, you know, being a coach in the NBA, you have to learn to deal with egos. You have to deal – each most of these guys have egos. They're playing basketball at the highest level. You know, this that was a comment that was made by Kyle Kuzma. Look, everybody has egos. The biggest thing about coaches and, and uh, one factor and one um, attribute they're looking for from the next coach is – that ability to deal with the multiple egos. So, you know, he, he's shown that he can do that. So Brian Keith, in my opinion, gets an A. He gets an A. I mean, he's done an immaculate job. Now, I'm sure, you know, I mean, his adjustments. Oh my, I mean, when he started making adjustments, man, I was just, I, I didn't know how to act because I ain't been through adjustments in probably three years. So the fact that he's making adjustments and he's finding the best lineup at the right time was, was just a breath of fresh air. You know, he's shown that he can do the job, and I think that his organization needs to go ahead and, give him the opportunity because I know there's other names out there. You know, I brought up Juwan Howard. Um, I brought up Mike Budenholzer right now. Um, it looks like the, uh, can't think of your name. You guys go ahead and uh, let me know down in the comments, but um, the, the assistant coach from Sacramento looks like he might get the job in Brooklyn It's between him and Mike Budenholzer. So we'll see, but he actually has the leg up on Mike Budenholzer. So we'll see. There's, there's definitely guys. And I definitely think they need to do their due diligence as far as head coach interview more than one guy. They just don't come out and say, Oh, Brian keeps the guy. Definitely do your due diligence. You know, go out there and talk to Mike Budenholzer. Go out there and reach out to Juwan Howard. You know, talk to Sam Cassell, Kenny Atkinson. You know, definitely you want to see your, you know, ownership and the front office do the due diligence, and I definitely expect it will. But Brian Keefe, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I mean, he's shown that he can do the job. He's shown that he can get a reaction out of these guys. He's popping in the locker room. He checks all the boxes. So I'm giving him an A because when he came in as interim head coach, you automatically saw a different team. You saw a better rebounding team. You saw a better defending, a better defending team. You saw a standard being being solidified, a standard of playing, playing hard, playing to win, and that tells me that he's a big part of them setting that culture up. Now, so we have the culture now here in DC, which we haven't always had. We have a culture here, so let's build on top of that. And that really goes into the off season, goes to the next season. I definitely want to see the culture, playing hard, playing to win, continue to evolve within the Washington Wizards because. In the words of Denny Avia, man, I don't think we have that long. I, I'm looking at two to three years. You know, definitely what are the biggest keys are our success, which is, you know, look, winning through the draft, you know, hitting on draft picks. And look, look at Bilal. He's got potential oozing out of him. Tristan Vucevic, he's already shown that. He's very polished off offensively. Now let's work on the defense. You know, we're hitting on second round picks. I mean, I think that they need to definitely hit through the draft, but they have done or they've already solidified the most important part of a rebuild in year one culture so brian keith has a lot to do with that and i'm giving him an a today so we're gonna go ahead and roll everybody um like i said we covered a lot uh ties versus jordan pool definitely comment who you guys looking at to be the future at point guard or is there a third alternative do you still think that we need to go in the draft and go get a guy definitely let me know what you guys think and you know weston cell jr look man good guy just bad situation and we graded interim head coach brian keith so definitely you definitely definitely let me know how you guys are thank you man um and definitely comment below like subscribe if you're not a member of locked on wizards definitely consider man because we have a lot of good content coming your way with free hc the off season coming up and so definitely rock with your boys so locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and that's also available on amazon fire tv and the free fire tv channels app Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So, again, a lot to unfold today, but definitely comment below. Let me know what you guys are thinking. So, again, um, I will see you guys. Well, matter of fact, tomorrow I will be heading down to the exit interviews with General Manager Will Dawkins and President of the Basketball Operations, Michael Winger. So, I'm definitely going to uh shoot them my best questions and we're definitely going to look at the exit interviews tomorrow night and don't forget every friday night in the off season we are going to definitely do the live q a on friday night so we can kick our weekends off right so again everybody have a blessed evening see you guys tomorrow hail to the wizards and peace